Hi, my name is Jens-Peter Kurp. I'm the game director in Canon Lynch, Deadman. And uh, today we'll be taking a small tour of our floor at Iron Interactive and uh, talking about story of the game, not as much the content of the story, but more like the development process of it and how we've come along with having these two guys at this point. Canon Lynch is now our first game. We've done uh, a handful of Hitman games and uh, we've taken a lot of the grittiness from there and make it a little bit more mature and a little bit more... real, if that's uh, a proper word for it. One of the things that became quite apparent quite quickly was that we, we had a fairly greedy uh, game on our hands, like it was a it was a crime game, it was, uh, it was quite brutal. And one of the things we've been doing with Kane and Lynch is to try and have more reason for the action. Like, they, we, we play the level, we do the things because Kane and Lynch have to. I don't have to listen to your shit. So even though we, we, try, we strive to make everything in the game matter to Kane and Lynch, Historically, we also always been a company that does uh, scenario-based game design, which means that we take a, we really want this location, let's try and see if we can mold it. So a lot of our inspiration for the story is also that we say, uh, we would really like this bust out, we would really like this uh, bank robbery, and uh, if we could get out in this kind of violence. Like these are very early inspirational stuff that's very nice for when you work with a story to say, this is where we would like to go. It also gives a very good indication of what people on the, on the team likes to work with. Just keep it cool. Having young guys, a young, like if you look at this guy, like he's, like that's exactly what we don't want. Like he's way too pretty, he's perfect in shape. He's like, he's not at the end of the rope, right? He's not, he's not kind of like the guy behind. Uh, this is more the atmosphere that we've been looking for. Greedy characters that kind of fitted in the in the storyline what we were looking for. When we started Kane and Lynch we had a little bit of a game before that and Kane was kind of the star of it and it was a single player story thing that was going along but Lynch was there as a as a bystander almost a sidekick and he just kept popping into the story. Whenever we did a scenario, it was like, oh, it would be nice to have Lynch here, and why don't we use Lynch to bounce back on a dialogue or something like that. And then at one point it became quite apparent that it, the whole thing evolved around a, a kind of a body movie genre. Stop bitching. We still got a long night ahead of us. Bitching? I'm not bitching. I just hate being ignored. It's not a game where you have to sit and, you know, oh, listen to story, listen to story, play difficult gameplay or anything. We, I think we've hit a pretty nice mix of giving you some background info, giving you some character, giving you some reason to not like these guys. I don't like them. I might approve of Lynch. I definitely dislike Kane, but I still care about him. That's kind of been our approach to you don't really have to have characters that you can relate to completely. Just look at Scarface or Unforgiving or anything like that. Like they're bastards, but I still care about them a little bit. And that's kind of the path that we've taken with Kane and Lynch. Like, Kane and Lynch is essentially a story about two fairly normal men that ruin their lives. It's, uh, and they ruined it so badly that they can't really come back to it again. So they, they lost their connection with their old life and they're trying to fix it so much. Like, very, very, really trying to fix the trouble, but the harder they try, the worse they make it. And they're both in a situation where they never really they always fail. So the different environments in Kane Lynch obviously needs quite a bit of art direction to go through and the guy that we're looking for is Martin Gulbeck who's been doing just that on Kane Lynch. Okay. Hey, Bart. My name is Martin Gulbeck. I'm uh, the art director on Kane and Lynch. A lot of uh, studios magazines and uh, whatever in this business have a tendency to talk a lot about the, the next-gen hardware. And of course we do have the shaders, rigid body, the bump maps, all the stuff. Instead of having focus on all the tech 
that's available out there. We have tried to, uh, you know, first come up with the colors, the mood, the the compositions that that we want to have. What images do we need? What environments do we need to to actually tell the story? This here um, is some of the the concept art for the very first level. As the game begins, the character is, you know, at the pit of his life. But what was important to us was to find. Um, to find a location that sort of had this uh, naked and sad atmosphere. And so we looked around in parts of Los Angeles where it's... Uh, the colors also in real life are sort of washed out. Um, it's, uh, it's not that populated. Actually, all the sketches we did here are without uh, you know, people on them. Because the character in the beginning of the game is also... He's, he's all alone. And we wanted the, the environment and what was around him to sort of ref reflect that. Of course, bef before we did this, we had people uh, go to Los Angeles. We had tons of photos and, and stuff. But using photos alone is not really uh, sufficient enough. Because if I show you uh, 10 different photographs, there's a lot of information in, in, in those photos that, that you will pick out. It's not necessarily the same information that I see in the photographs. This is why the, the, the concept drawings uh, are important, because uh, they are much more, way more simplified than what the photo would be. All the stuff that we don't want to have in the scene uh, is left out in the concept drawing. Um, another thing you can do with uh, concept drawings that you cannot do using photos alone is you can really specify the, the colors and the contrast you want to have. That's very difficult to do if you have like a batch of you know, 100 different photos because they would be taking on the different weather conditions, the different uh, time of day and, and, and so on. Hey, I'm Anders Poulsen and I'm lead character designer. I, when we design characters, they, um, we are looking for doing something that nobody else has done before. Kane was the first one that was designed and he was uh, started out to be this kind of flawless, slick, um, yeah, average uh, character that we normally see in, 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 in games. And then we kind of added um, the, the influence of life to them, like boldness, beard, glasses, kind of evolved from being this very suited guy to to be more loose. And Lynch was then added as as this sidekick character, but became, but actually gave more and more life to Kane's hero character. Uh, Lynch is a, um, a, a schizophrenic, a, a insane, uh, medicated character that is kind of stuck in his own reality. He has this kind of redneck character but dressed in a, in a, in a fancy suit that kind of makes him more complex. I don't, I don't see him as, he's not full of hate, he's more, he's I see him more as basically scared. He's, he's, he's scared of himself, he's scared of people, he's uh, paranoid, and he kind of acts from fear. Comes from me, I think. It's a bit of anger put him into him, and, and a bit of childhood memories, and um, paranoia that we all have, like, uh, they say something about me and stuff like that. I like him a lot. I, I think he's more interesting than, than the hero. Um, and, 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 but he's also a more complex character. He's, he's, he's not straightforward. My name is Kim Kroll. I'm the lead game designer of Fragile Alliance, the multiplayer part of Kena Lynch Dead Men. This was our first multiplayer game, and therefore we also decided to make a completely different uh, game. Fresh Alliance is a 
totally new take on multiplayer. It's a uh, eight players starting together, uh, right next to each other, and they have to do a heist together. And in one of the heists, they have to rob a bank. Uh, they arrive at right outside the bank, at, right at the same time as a as a money transport arrives, and they, after 200 seconds, our getaway car leaves. So we better work together. We better work fast. And the winner is the player that leaves the heist with the most money. All the players, all the mercs that escape together in the alliance, eh, they share the money equally. But if I become a traitor and kill one from the alliance, eh, I don't have to share my money with anyone. I can keep the, the million for myself. It's this kind of greed that often breaks the alliance. When you become a traitor, you have a reward on your head. Everybody gets a reward for killing you. So as a trader, you'll have everybody hot on your, on your heels. The more guts you have, the, the earlier you become a trader and kill one of the members, and the more greedy you are, the, the more money you're, you're aiming for. When you die, you respawn as, as police, and you'll get back and, and have to stop the alliance from escaping the heist. It's totally different every time you play it. Even five rounds in a row with the same players, eh, you never know what happens because in this round may, someone might choose the tactics to sneak behind the others and take them out just before they try to, to escape in the, in the getaway van. And sometimes the same player chooses to run through the level and escape and then hope for other players to escape with him and, and share the money with them. It's totally different every time. So what we're going to have a small look at here is the co-op part of the game, which is quite a big chunk of our development that's gone into that. Kane and Lynch as a, as a two-player, as a two-character story, um, it's kind of born as a co-op gameplay. One of the, the main objectives for, for co-op in general was, of course, to give the player the chance to experience Lynch, like hands-on, basically. One of the unique features we have is that as, uh, when you play Lynch, you're gonna experience uh, things you're not gonna experience in, in single player. So uh, you're gonna have your psychotic episode, so to say. Sometimes you have control over Lynch's psychotic behavior, sometimes you don't. When you die as, as Lynch, what you get is, you get his death thoughts at the time, so you get more of his background story revealed in the co-op. Then we have, of course, uh, all, all the areas are, are designed with co-op in mind to create, of course, the, the classy co-op gameplay of outflanking enemies. You can swap your squad members around between the two guys, between Kane and Lynch. You can swap uh, weapons at any time. In co-op, you can only heal each other, which creates, of course, an interesting mechanic in terms of depending on each other, and you have to go through the game together. So there is uh, situations and, and elements in the game that are specifically designed for co-op only. It's definitely worth, uh, I mean, playing the game in co-op and single player. Like, you're gonna experience stuff in co-op that you don't in single player. Thank you.